Hello? Hello, Amarada. Let some people come on. I know it's a great summer night. You may have some people on vacation, enjoying it, enjoying the beach. I'll wait till y'all get connected. Potential. That's what we're going to share about tonight. Potential. Your potential. few minutes. I have my little viewers over here, my little doggies. <laughs> Hello. So somebody's coming on. A couple more. Hello. Hey Val. Glad to have you. I'm going to go ahead and get started. It's, it is a little bit past 8 o'clock. So we are just going to continue and uh, people will join and hopefully if you need to go back and listen to any other part of this, you can come back and watch it later. Hey Val, so glad you're here. Yeah, it's a summer night, so I'm sure there's people working out in their yards or uh, at the beach enjoying this weather and um, it's beautiful here in South Carolina and this is the best time of the day when it's so hot is the evening. So a lot of people sit outside and enjoy it. Tonight I wanted to share some personal experiences and talk about potential. And I want in order to start that off, I wanted to read the definition of what potential is. What does that mean? Well, it's defined as having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future. And I like this definition. It says latent qualities or abilities that may be developed and lead to future success or usefulness. I like that. Developed, in other words, it's things you have, we have within us that can be developed and lead to success or usefulness or both, which I think that would be one and the same really. So that is what potential is. And preparing for this, I was thinking about my potential and your potential and some of the very reasons that I started Amarada was because I know that there is more of me to give and more of me to share and uh, I, with the world and, and I feel like that's true with a lot of people that we know we have more, we just don't really know kind of how to get it out there. So I wanted to read this about an experience I, uh, that I went through, or wanted to share this. I try to go back and record things and write things down, your feelings or an experience, but just um, bear with me. Hopefully I can, I have to put my little glasses on. <laughs> Hopefully I can see this, I'm gonna turn my little light on. And we will. We'll muddle through this together. 501 is the name of this. Well, a 501, that's one I've not seen before. Even though it's not funny, it's better than crying about it. All those years of working hard, struggling to do what's right, fair, and honest, and now 501. 
It only took six months to get here, too. My credit score had never seen that low. My husband's was a little bit higher, but I'm not even sure how he got those extra points because about everything that we have is shared. We did laugh because that's all we could do. Surviving was key, and this number in no way described the integrity and fortitude of this duo. Besides, we were following the plan outlaid by our credit card companies, mortgage companies, etc., and we knew this process would not be quick. We just had to go through. Sometimes we just have to go through. Not around, not over, but directly through. It's a little dirty and it's very messy, but a strategic and direct approach is the best plan. This plan is also not the shortcut or the band-aid. It is the long, arduous path that takes us to the other side. And that's true. Because you see our potential, or my potential in this particular instance, was definitely not a 501. A 501 was where I was at. And that's where I found myself during the 2008-2009 housing market bubble burst or whatever you want to call it. But our construction company, we had real estate company and everything was intertwined in the housing market. And we had thought that we were building different um, entities that were really not directly related. However, they both were related to the housing market and it did affect us. It affected us drastically I and mean, we found ourselves in a survival mode and having to get very creative with how we got through it. And we did that in one way by working together as husband and wife, being a team, not blaming each other, not crying about it or whining about it. Yeah, it was, it was very upsetting when you're having to make some really, really hard decisions, some really, really hard choices, it's very difficult. And there was no quick way through. We knew it was going to be very long. And I said arduous. Imagine it was years. I'm, I'm guessing somewhere probably between five to seven years, maybe longer, because that happened in 2008. Now it's 2022. And the good news is my credit score is 810. And I say that not in a bragging way. I say that because it was really, really worked for, really difficultly <laughs> worked for. And it took years of strategies, years of planning, just different things to to bring us out of basically, hey Heather, of basically out of or through. I don't know what you want to say. I guess it would be through because it was like being in a pit. It was like falling in a hole, like in a trap and you're trying to get out of and you've done everything that, you know, was right. You've done everything that everybody else was doing. And because, just because of being self-employed, which we were, being in construction, that is just where we found ourselves. So we couldn't cry about it, although we did feel like it. And when we saw our numbers, I remember where we were and we printed out our credit report and we looked at it and we were like, oh, oh God, I've never, seen, I've never seen anything so bad. But we did have a plan and we had a plan with even the credit card companies, mortgage companies that we were working with, dealing with. And we decided to take really the high road. We could have walked away. We could have said, we're not dealing with this. We're just going to just like let it go. But we didn't. We did the right thing. We did it with integrity. We did it with honor. And it definitely took, hey, Claudia, it definitely took fortitude for us to stick with it. But we knew that wasn't our potential. When we saw that number, that 501, or my number, 
I knew that that did not define me. It doesn't define you. It just merely showed where I was or what I was going through at that point. Now, yes, we all get judged on different things, not just our credit score. It can be maybe the kind of car that we drive. It could be the house or the neighborhood that we live in. It could be our physique. But you know what? People don't know really where you've been and what we've walked through by looking from the outside in. Now, yes, 501 did not define me, but it definitely was a measure of something. It was where I was. It was the point that I was at that point in my life. So what was I going to do? I could, I could have whined and cried about it. I definitely felt bad, but I had to come up with a plan on what I was going to do to get out of it. And basically my husband came up with it, came up with strategies. He began to study what we needed to do, or it was kind of like a game. And really that's what a lot of things are in life. There's like a little trick. And I, I am a math major, so I, I studied a lot of upper level, had to, math. And with about every different type of, um, I won't say function, but when you get to different levels of math, you have to approach it in different ways. And, and there's little tricks. And so instead of really trying to figure things out sometimes, just go with, if you've got a process, just do the process there's a strategy to solve this particular type of problem and don't try to think it all the way through just use the tools that you've got and that's what my husband began to investigate to see what the strategy was what are they looking for Let's, how do we give them what they're looking for so that we could recover uh, and improve upon our credit I, I don't know that I've ever had this high of a credit score and I will say I owe that to my husband, but it has taken us years. And yes, a Band-Aid won't work. A shortcut will not work. Sometimes we just have to put our nose to the grind and we have to be patient. And you know, I think the patient part is probably more challenging than, than the putting our nose to the grind because most of us, we do like to work. We do. It's just, we want it like yesterday, right? When we're going through anything that's challenging and we know that where we're at now is here, but our potential is so much higher, we know that. But sometimes we just don't know how to get from here to here. And sometimes, I'll say this for me, and maybe you can agree with me, or maybe you may have felt this way in the past. Sometimes it just seems so hard and so overwhelming, so exhausting, and I guess like it's gonna take so much time. And will I ever make it? Will I ever make it to that point? And it's, it's always the in-between, and we talked about it, I think last week, it's the in-between that is the most challenging. The start is great, you're excited. The finish is great because you've achieved, but it's the in-between that is so challenging. So we stayed the course, and we still stay the course. We we have learned from that experience what to do and what not to do. We have learned to be proactive in ways so that we don't have to be reactive. Now, that doesn't mean that we've learned everything. There's still lessons out there for us to learn you know and and we are we, we're learning I think we are human becomings we're all learning and um, becoming you know constantly learning about different things about ourselves about others and 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 about be, being successful because that's what potential it was defined as right some something in us is already there that will help us to become successful, help us to become more useful. And the word I like to use, and I like to use it a lot here in Amarada, 
is purposeful and fulfilling. So there's something in all of us, and I really believe it's God-given. It's innate. There's a gift. There's something that was given to all of us that we have, that only we have, and for this time, we were put on the earth at this particular time to share and to give forth that which is in us. And to me, that is our potential. And I, I hope that you are learning while you're out here. There are ways that we can set ourselves up to be successful. There are ways that we can utilize the gifts that are within us. Hopefully you're encouraged by others around you in this group and hopefully in your network around you, your family, your home, your friends, that you do have a gift you have something to give you have potential but now my question is this what are we doing what are we doing so that we are reaching that potential well I've been on a journey and I've been on a journey for years and I would say I would say it did start for me in uh, 2008 and it started in the very beginning for us uh, in South Carolina. We experienced that downturn in, I remember it, June 2008. It happened at different times for different regions that are in the United States, but for us, it was June. I remember, and it's funny too because it's July, but I remember in July, you know, I did all the books, I did the payroll, I had to um, pay the payroll taxes. So if you've ever done anything, like any, any of you are self-employed, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm really, and I'm really sharing, I'm being very transparent here, because I'm gonna tell you some things. <laughs> so I remember there was no money coming in. Everything had gone silent. And I was asking my husband, I said, what's going on? Is there some sort of bad rumor about us? Our phones were not ringing. It was silence. And he said, no. He said, it's everywhere. He said, I'm walking around in Lowe's, and I can see the fear in people's eyes. They don't know what to do. They don't know what is going on. It was like somebody really had cut a faucet, just cut it off. And it was just silence. And we had payroll taxes that we had to pay. We had unemployment taxes. And when you're a business and you have several employees and you pay quarterly taxes, those taxes can be in the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, just depending on the size of your business. Well, I couldn't figure out what in the world we were gonna do. I didn't know, but I remember this one, this one day, this one evening, kind of after everyone had gone to bed, kids were little, and I was in my living room. And I remember laying on the floor and crying because I didn't know what we were gonna do. I didn't know how, I didn't know how we were gonna make it. And um, the last thing anybody wants to do is be on the bad side of the IRS, right? So I remember laying in the floor and crying really and just asking God, please help, please tell me, tell me what to do I don't understand what is going on and I just stopped for a little bit and this is one of the very few times in my life that I really heard God talk to me now it wasn't audible but it was as clear as if it were audible and he said these few words and this is all he said he says I'm preparing you and that's all he said and immediately I felt and the extreme peace come all over me. And I felt wonderful at that point. I knew I was gonna be okay. It was a sense of everything was gonna work out. But I laughed because I only felt that way for about eight hours because the next morning I woke up, I thought, oh my God, what do you mean you're preparing me? What, what is it? Maybe it's something really bad's gonna happen. You know how your human mind jumps to sometimes worst case scenario well, 
That was July of 2008, and it wouldn't be until really about, I think it was March of 2010, that our business began to pick up again. We began to get work. And even then, it's still, it was just like, it was like trying to roll a snowball uphill because there were so many, and my husband was, he was like he was juggling about 20 plates all at one time, trying to keep everything just going. And, and it, I, I still, I know I can look back and we can see now God's hand in all of it and how he brought us through it. It is still, it was, it was a challenge. It was a challenging time. And we did make it through. We'd made it through. And then God really began to bless. He began to bless us. And I think part of my preparation, I believe, is complete. Because I kept asking God, when will I know? When will I know that my preparation, whatever you're preparing me for, is, is done? Well, that's now. It's I am I am moving into the next phase of my potential and that is here with y'all and I know that some of you I'd say most of you that are out here we are very kindred we're very like-minded and you're on some of the same journey that I'm on I'm gonna put a link in later on tonight I'm gonna work on getting it in a comment so come back to this video later but if you're interested in finding out things that I've done or how I have gotten through some things, and there's so many things out there, resources and options, I'm going to put a link and you can click on that and we'll talk. You'll have to, I think, click somewhere it says your discovery call, but basically it lets you book on my calendar. Then we'll just do a call. And we can just talk anyway if you want to talk. So I would love to do that. But I would love to talk to you and... I want to see everyone that's in this group, the ones that are really serious, I want to see you be very successful and very fulfilled and know that you're living your purpose. No, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you are living what you were created to be. Because when we're in that spot, when we're in that place, work is not work, it's our passion. Life is not surviving, it is thriving. And every day, even though we have a little struggles every once in a while, but, but every day we get up, it's a new day, and it's a day of potential. So I love y'all. I'm gonna put the link down. If you wanna do it, just click, click through. It may ask you for some, some information, but it will allow you to schedule on my calendar and I look forward to meeting y'all. Have a wonderful evening. I will see you out here Saturday, and we'll do coffee. Love y'all. Bye-bye.